What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Water Cooler Talk. My name is Caleb Turner, and I'm a sports writer at KSL.com. This week on this episode, we are going to be recapping once again several sporting events, football, college football, uh, a little bit of soccer as well, which will tie into a very special uh, interview, which I have coming up later on this episode with Real Salt Lake midfielder Diego Luna, which I hope you stick around for. That will be after the recaps and main part of this episode. A very cool interview with him. So uh, make sure you stick around for that interview. First ever player guest on Water Cooler Talk. And we also have uh, a little bit of hockey for the first time on this episode as the Utah Hockey Club played their first preseason game today on Sunday, September 22nd, 2024. So to get things kicked off, we're going to recap what went down this weekend in the world of sports as it pertains to our KSL audience, mostly Utah, starting with uh, college football. Utah State was on the road taking on Temple, uh, and they were favored in that game quite a bit, but came away with a loss, unfortunately, 45-29. to uh, And that came soon after uh, some news uh, about them possibly joining a different conference. They're currently in the Mountain West, but more on that later. Uh, so Utah State picks up the loss, unfortunately. Um, another one after losses to to USC and Utah as well in, in past weeks. Uh, so a tough look for the Aggies, um, but we'll see if things can pick up and, and maybe, you know, once basketball season rolls around as well. Obviously, we know that uh, Logan tends to be a bit of a basketball town, and they've been doing really well in the last few years. So um, if you're down on the, on the Utah State football season, maybe stick around for basketball coming up uh, in a couple months. Moving on to the Utes of Utah, they were also on the road. They went down to Stillwater, Oklahoma, to take on the Cowboys of Oklahoma State uh, in a tight matchup. Um, it was it was kind of a coin flip. The odds were going back and forth all week. Uh, largely, I'm guessing that uh, that variance came with the speculation of whether or not Cam Rising, the quarterback, would play. Uh, once again, we are kind of in this waiting game, guessing game with. Uh, who's the, who the starting quarterback at, up at the U is going to be. And uh, all signs pointed to it being Cam Rising once again after he missed uh, last week's game. But uh, when the offense came out to play down there in Oklahoma, it was Isaac Wilson uh, taking the snaps uh, at quarterback for Utah. And the true freshman came away with the win. Uh, Utes ended up beating the Cowboys 22-19 to uh, for their first ever official Big 12 matchup. So, Big win down there for the Utes. Uh, it was a, a 12 versus 14 matchup there that helped the Utes move up to uh, number 10 in the AP 20, top 25 poll. Uh, BYU, to kind of finish up college football, maybe the biggest game of the weekend, uh, biggest win of the weekend for Utah teams. BYU was at home in Provo welcoming uh, Kansas State, the Wildcats, who uh, were undefeated, playing very, very well up until, up until this point. Um, and they just kind of dominated the the Cougars did um Kansas State came in couldn't really get anything going were held without a touchdown in the game for the first time since 2020 uh and BYU comes away with a 38 to 9 win uh thanks in large part to a uh highlight play uh kickoff return uh punt return rather uh by Parker Kingston that rolled all the way back to almost into the end zone right to the goal line just about and he rounded and Kind of went along the goal line, came out the other side, and just sprinted down the sideline. Got some good blocks in there. Uh, shout out to that BYU special teams unit. Got a touchdown off of off of a, a massive punt, and uh, and BYU came up with that win, thirty eight to nine down there in Provo, which gets BYU into the rankings, uh, into the top twenty five for the first time this season. So two ranked teams. Here in the state of Utah, BYU and Utah, and they're also at the top of the Big 12. So uh, I'll kind of talk a little bit about that again uh, later in the show as we get into our winners and losers. But a very impressive showing by BYU and Utah in the opening week of Big 12 play in football. BYU once again with a defensive effort, allowing only nine points. They haven't allowed uh, more than 15 points this season. So uh, Jay Hill, the defensive coordinator down there, doing very well um, and, and has those guys playing in great shape. Moving on to a bit of soccer as we continue these recaps. Uh, Real Salt Lake was at home against Portland yesterday on Saturday at America First Field in Sandy. Uh, got out to an early start, 2-0, but unfortunately had to settle for a 3-3 tie. However, due to both that result and also 
uh, an Austin loss um, to Houston elsewhere in the league. RSL clinched a playoff spot. Fourth year in a row. Sixth time in the last seven years that RSL has made the playoffs. Um, so very impressive. Although they have gotten out in the first round the last couple of years. Um, definitely perennial uh, playoff contenders there and, and making the uh, into the top half of the Western Conference year after year. So respect there. And, and they did it pretty early this year with, you know, about a month to go in the season still. So uh, big, big moment for there uh, for Real Salt Lake there. Just wish they would have come out with a win. Uh, the Utah Royals, on the other hand, were on the road. Uh, and they struggled to score. Uh, once again, let in an early goal after letting one in the first 30 seconds last week. They let one in in the, in the first three minutes uh, at Gotham FC out in New Jersey uh, on Sunday morning and ended up losing 1-0. Uh, so Royals get their third loss in a row. They've had their fair share of injuries. Um, Ali Sentinor, their uh, number one pick, has been away with the women's national team, the under-20 national team at the Women's World Cup. Uh, where they came away with a third place medal. So congratulations to Allie on that uh, top three finish, and she will hopefully be coming back to the Royals soon because they need her help, along with several other players, such as Mina Tanaka, Japanese striker who has been out with, with an injury as well. So Royals and RSL both kind of uh, entering the home stretch of their seasons, coming down to the wire. Uh, the, the window for the Royals to uh, make anything meaningful of this season as far as, you know, playoffs or standing spot goes is, is really narrowing. Uh, they are back to last place in the NWSL, which uh, the sporting director did say one of their goals was to not finish in last place. So that'll be something we keep an eye out these next few weeks to see if the Royals can get a win, a couple ties here and there to, uh, to not finish in last place. So tough to see that. And then lastly, uh, as I mentioned, Utah Hockey Club uh, in action in their their powder blue, sky blue, mountain blue, whatever you want to call it, uniforms, a little bit of white, a little, little bit of black in there too. Uh, no official mascot yet, though it, it has been rumored that we are close and that apparently the team knows what the mascot is going to be. Nonetheless, Utah Hockey Club, as they are currently known, played their first preseason game ever as a, an NHL team. They, were, they, uh, they played St. Louis uh, in a kind of an exhibition type match out in Iowa, um, and they came away with the win five three after after going down early. Um, so the Utah Hockey Club era begins with a win, and they've got a quick turnaround. Uh, they come home. They have a game uh, tomorrow night uh, at the Delta Center. Uh, at least I believe you might want to double check that. <laughs> uh, but first preseason home game uh, for the Utah Hockey Club as they continue. Uh, warming up for the season, which uh, gets started uh, in a few weeks. So, big moment for there for, for there for the Utah hockey team, uh, and hopefully more to come for them. As we look ahead, I mentioned Utah, Utah hockey club at home. Quick turnaround tomorrow uh, versus the Los Angeles Kings. Uh, looking at soccer, Real Salt Lake will uh, head out on the road to face Austin, who uh, helped them out with with a loss to get them into the playoffs. Well, now they get a chance uh, to go down there themselves, um, down to Austin FC. Los Verdes, um, down in my neck of the woods, uh, South Central Texas, and see what they can do. Uh, haven't had a lot of luck in Texas over the last few years, uh, but RSL looking for a win as they hope to maintain that top four spot in the West. The Royals, on the on the other hand, come back home. They kind of switch spots. Uh, Utah Royals taking on Louisville at America First Field on Saturday. And then in college football, Utah State uh, and BYU hitting the road. The Aggies at Boise State, BYU at Baylor, whereas the Utes come home to Rice Eccles Stadium where they will face Arizona as Big 12 play continues. And this is where we uh, kind of start to get into the winners and losers of the week. Talk, speaking of Big 12, as I mentioned, it was a big weekend for those two Utah schools. So our first winner of the week, Utah schools in the Big 12. Uh, recent additions, BYU uh, just last year, their first year. Uh, Utah this year is their first year in the Big 12 and already making a, a big mark uh, in the conference. Top of the table, top of the standings, sorry, I'm speaking soccer language there. Uh, standings uh, in in the Big 12 uh, with a couple of big wins over the weekend. Uh, so they look to keep that going. And then our other winner, the Utah Hockey Club, as I mentioned, they get to start off their history as an NHL team with a win. So that will forever be, you know, uh, etched in the history books. Obviously, it'll mean more once we get to the regular season. We'll see if they can get a win in their first regular season game. But first time out on the ice, first time in these uniforms, first time these players wearing Utah um, on their on their chests. 
uh, they got the win. So definitely we have to recognize them and, and hope uh, more success for them, as I mentioned. Losers. Uh, not a whole, whole lot of losers this week. Um, but I you know, kind of with a question mark here, I say, you know, Big 12 <laughs> uh, by bringing in these teams from Utah, BYU and, and Utah. Um, you have to wonder, you know, the teams that were already there uh, or the other teams that came in, they're saying, hey, you know, what, what about us? You bring in these teams from from out west, from north of here, outside of, you know, typical stomping grounds of of Texas, Oklahoma, et cetera. And they're running the show all of a sudden. Um, so overall, I think it's it's probably good for the conference long term to have more competition, higher level of competition. Right. Um, but I think for now, you know, I'll get into this a little bit more later, but the fans in the Big 12 um, certainly um, I'm sure they have some thoughts, you know, about uh, their own teams, how they haven't been able to compete, at least through this, this first week with these Utah teams. Obviously, there's a long way to go. It's just the first week of the Big 12 season. So we'll see what happens. Um, but you got to kind of wonder, you know. Uh, you lose, you know, teams like Texas and Oklahoma and think, hey, this is our chance uh, to maybe make a run in the Big 12. And then, oh, lo and behold, these uh, these blue and red teams from up northwest from the Beehive State coming in and uh, and running the show. So we shall see what happens. But I have Big 12 kind of in general as a loser there. And then winner slash loser. I wanted to point this out. Um, Utah State. Uh, around the start of their game yesterday on Saturday, there was uh, this kind of report that came out saying that the Pac-12, uh, obviously a lot of you are familiar with the story of the Pac-12 recently, a big mass exodus of schools from the conference, including Utah. Uh, they're they were down to only two schools, Washington State, Oregon State. Uh, and then in, in recent weeks, um, rumors of, of more schools joining possibly in the next few weeks. Uh, and several of those were Mountain West teams. Utah State was not initially announced or uh, mentioned. However, yesterday, Utah State was mentioned in a report that said if the Big 12 decides to stay within their geographical region of, you know, West Coast, Western United States, um, if if they deem the geographical setting to be important to their expansion, Utah State will be at the top of that list as far as Pac-12 geographical proximity expansion. So uh, that happens, which is, would be great news for the Aggies. Uh, they need, they, you know, could use a, a bit of a bone thrown their way with uh, some of the things that have happened with a uh, firing of a coach and uh, Department of Justice investigations, etc. Um, but then uh, Utah State turns around and loses to Temple um, a game they were supposed to win, you know, a mere hours later. Um, so not the best look for for their hopes to, to get into a, a major conference like the big like like the Pac-12. Um, but pros and cons there. Win winner slash loser Utah State. Constantly, it seems like they're going through it. Uh, got a feel for the Aggies up there uh, in Logan. But no shortage of action and, and things going on uh, as it pertains to them. Uh, just hope that maybe they can come out on the winning side. Uh, moving on to our stock up, stock down section. Got to give a shout out here to the Cougars. My alma mater, I will say there may be, may be a little bit of bias there. But BYU uh, football started as 13th in the Big 12 preseason rankings. So let's just say hypothetically you bought stock uh, back then, you know, a month or two ago when those preseason rankings came out. They were 13th. Now your returns are looking pretty good through the roof, I might say, as they beat, you know, who was supposed to be possibly, you know, the top one or two team in the conference in Kansas State. Uh, they come in and you you hold them without a touchdown. And all of a sudden BYU is, you know, looking like they could be top of the conference. Some even saying, you know, Utah without Cam Rising, could BYU even win the Big 12? Like I said, very, very early. However, not 13th, right? So if you if you bought low on BYU, the stock is up on BYU. It's looking good. Um, and hey, like I, it is early, so maybe you can still buy a little bit lower um, than you might be able to in a few weeks. Or, you know, uh, you, might, you might need to sell high at a certain point too, depending on how the season goes for BYU. So for now, stock up, BYU. Yeah. Um, and then on another note, with with BYU stock going up, on, even on the basketball side of things, I know it's football season, not quite basketball, but at the at Lavelle Edwards Stadium at the BYU game last night, uh, several you know kind of celebrity type figures there in attendance. Uh, the Utah Jazz, several players were there. Coach Will Hardy, another NBA figure, Adrian Wojnarowski was at the BYU football game. Um, the e famous ESPN. NBA insider slash reporter, you know, the Woj bomb, Woj bombs always breaking news about players and teams. 
uh, he was there, took a picture uh, with several people, you know, Will Hardy and, and I think Jimmer was in there too. However, it, it appears that Woj, uh, at least for some amount of time, was hanging out with BYU men's basketball head coach Kevin Young. Uh, Woj famously broke the news about Kevin Young going from an NBA assistant coach to BYU's head coach and then also broke news about uh, Igor Demon, the uh, you know possible top 10 NBA prospect, choosing BYU as his college that he wanted to attend before going to the NBA. So that's got to be a pretty good sign. Uh, Woj has left ESPN and, and is, is now working at St. Bonaventure uh, in their uh, basketball department. But for, you know, uh, a, a person of his magnitude within the, the basketball world, within the sports world, to be to be hanging out with Kevin Young, to be hanging out at a BYU game, got to be a pretty good sign. Uh, so, yeah, stock up for BYU in general. Um, they are on the rise, I would say. And lastly, before we get into our very special interview with Diego Luna, I wanted to test out a fun other little segment with you guys called Flag on the Play. Uh, insert whistle, referee whistle sound right here. Uh, throw my flag. There was a, a, a social media interaction, a social media post by a Kansas State fan before the BYU game. Uh, I won't go into graphic details here, but saying uh, basically placing a bet, saying what he would do if uh, if BYU beat Kansas State, the the team that he is a fan of, uh, thinking it was very unlikely. Uh, BYU was not favored. Kansas State was undefeated and was looking very very good. Um, he's, he mentioned something about, uh, Taco Bell and a certain type of burrito, uh, being inserted where it should not be. Now, uh, as of right now, I'm not sure whether or not that has happened since the game happened last night. Uh, you can go check his social media, look it up if you'd like to. I won't go into many details here, but, uh, I'm going to throw a bit of a flag on that behavior from, uh, from that Kansas state fan. Very interesting, funny nonetheless, um, but a little bit disturbing. Um, so uh, interesting behavior there. Um, going to throw a flag and we'll see if I bring that back in future weeks, but just thought that was something interesting um, and a little wacky you guys might want to hear about. So I will stop talking. I will get uh, now to my interview with Diego Luna so you can hear somebody else's voice, hear from somebody else for a change. Uh, Diego and I, uh, this was recorded before the uh, the Portland game last night. So I, I, I tell him good luck and we don't talk about the results of that match because it was it was on Friday before the match. Um, but some great topics there. And yes, I did ask him whether or not um, he knows about his the other Diego Luna casting Andor from Star Wars, uh, among other very fun questions. So stick around for that right now. My interview with Diego Luna. We'll catch you guys next time. Alrighty, guys, we are now going uh, joined by our guest, Real Salt Lake, uh, midfielder, attacking midfielder, winger, Diego Luna. Which, uh, which position do you prefer to be uh, identified by? <laughs> oh, I think with RSL, I've played more of the left wing role, but I think my ideal position would be the number 10. Yeah, but so... um, I'd say left wing right now. Gotcha. So, so I guess they all, they, uh, they both kind of apply attacking midfielder, winger. Uh, yeah left wing right now for real salt lake yep. uh been a really exciting season for you um i want to talk a bit about just kind of i guess what this year's been like for you uh i mean off the field you had a son in the last year or so yeah. um and then on the field you got to be an all-star uh and real salt lake has been doing really well um and should clinch a playoff spot tomorrow if all things go well um so yep. maybe to start out maybe just reflecting or just kind of i know you're in the middle of it still but what has this last year or this season been like for you yeah, it's been good, and I think the the craziest thing for me has been like, I you know individually and and in my own head haven't thought that I've done, you know, as well as I could and have reached a uh, you know a new level that that I'm capable of that I've been wanting to reach, but uh, I'm glad to still have you know performed well uh, throughout the season and and be part of such an amazing team that that really puts in the work and. And you know, built you know a DNA and and kind of our work rate and everything. So I think that's the the coolest thing about it. But um, yeah, and like I said, it's not over yet. So we still have a a couple more a uh, couple more games that you know that mean a lot to to clinch some playoff home games and and yeah. 
So just going back a little bit, I mentioned you were an all-star. You, you got to go uh, to what, Columbus, I believe it was, Yep. um, and have that experience. Um, maybe real quick for those that didn't get to hear kind of your thoughts on that afterward, what was that like to to be with some of those you know older guys, big names, and to just kind of uh, have that first experience? Yeah, that it was a a dream come true, right? Something I could put on my resume that that you know MLS All Star at, at twenty years old was was pretty awesome, right? To be the youngest guy there and to to play <laughs> to play with like Busquets and Jordi Alba and and all these guys is pretty insane. Evander, you know, all guys that you know are are skillful players, guys that I look up to and that are all you know very talented guys. So. It was definitely something up there and and something cool that I that I now have in my you know in my resume. Yeah, you mentioned you, you were you were the youngest one there, um, but uh, you've been here at RSL for you know a couple of years now, and with how many changes and kind of guys coming in and out there there have been, uh, you're you're now one of the kind of the, the longest uh, tenured guys here. You've been here for longer than you know you know probably half the team at this point. So what's Yeah. that tra transition been like for you from kind of new guy to more experienced, you know, almost a veteran? We could even say, even though you know you're not even 21 yet. <laughs> Yeah, I think no, it's been good, right? Coming in here and being somebody that's that's been here for a while and kind of that's built this DNA, right? That that we've been working on the past two years and and been here through the ups and downs. It's been good to kind of you know from from the outside just sit back and kind of see everybody adapt to our you know new guys coming in and and adapting to this style of play and to to who we want to be. I think that's the the coolest thing And I have to apologize. I, I I did just double check. You are 21. Uh, you did just turn 21. So uh, happy belated birthday a couple thank weeks you ago. no you're Um, all good thank you yeah. So um, you know, obviously you mentioned you guys have a lot you more you want to accomplish this season. Um, you guys uh made the playoffs last year. You kind of had a little bit of a breakout last year in the playoffs. As you reflect on what that experience was like, uh, and then now preparing for another playoff run. Um, how how maybe did that experience last year help you for how you can confront this year's? yeah i think we learned you know the new playoff setting right where we have three games and stuff like that it's going to be difficult it's uh it's about being in the right form heading into playoffs because it's not just one or two games you know it, it's going to be a, quite a few games to to make to make the run in so i think it's about uh play well and and to i think at the end of the day it's about being consistent you know you, it's not a a lucky one game win where it gets to put you through and um i think pk shootouts are going to be very important and i think that's something that everyone needs to take into to account that you know that that's what broke it for us last year and it, it's you know it's something that's a big a big role in this new uh three game playoff thing so i think that's something that we have to put in our bags and be ready for Did I hear a little guy try, uh, trying to jump in there for a second? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's running around over here. <laughs> He's playing, having a great time. you just got to yeah, you just got to put on bluey, right? Uh, then, Exactly, then then yeah. then he's good to go. Yeah, he's he's on his <laughs> Elmo stage right now, so okay, we're 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 moving on. we're moving up the <laughs> ranks, yeah. wow, incredible. Uh maybe moving into some some stuff uh Yeah. off the field a little bit. Um So uh, here on this podcast, we kind of talk about all the sports, whether that be, you know, college football, soccer, basketball, NFL, all that. Um, and with it being September, you know, the NFL has started up college football as well. I don't know how into American football you are. Are there any teams, professional or college, that you follow? Um, I'm not really into the, the college, <laughs> the college, uh, football, but I'm a, I'm a Raiders fan and a Cowboys fan. Oh, you got both. Yeah, I got both because I was, <laughs> I was a Raiders fan. Um, you know, the Oakland Raiders and that's where I'm from. I kind of grew up being a Raiders fan. And then, uh, my uh, girlfriend got me, their family got me into the, the Cowboys When I moved out to Texas, so I became a Cowboys fan for a bit, and uh, yeah, just support both teams, and yeah. Honestly, I'm kind of jealous because I am only a Cowboys fan. So, so we Okay. have that in common. Um, Yeah, there you go. Nice. I'm from uh, I'm from San Antonio. Um, Okay. so, Yeah. so Perfect. yeah. That the, you know, I, I kind of I guess we technically had the choice between Cowboys and Texans, but you know, Cowboys are definitely the bigger team. 
Um, but I'm kind of jealous that you have another one that you can kind of go to just in case. I have a backup if one's not doing well. Exactly, yeah. which which we know the Cowboys always want to uh, disappoint their fans. Disappoint us, yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's cool, though. Um, and then, yeah, so maybe going back to uh, – you mentioned that you grew up in, in, in the in the Oakland area. Um, what's that been like, I guess, kind of – I don't know if you followed, like, the other sports teams that were out there, but I know there's been kind of like an exodus from the Oakland area. Like, the Warriors moved over to San Francisco. The yep. Raiders left. Uh, the A's are leaving. Yep. How, how does it make you feel as, like, an Oakland sports fan? <laughs> no, it's just interesting, right? I think I think there's a lot of reasons behind it, right? But, um, yeah, it, it's a little sad, but uh, I think it's – People, you know, they realize that it has to be done if they want to keep those those teams, you know, big and and with the fan bases and everything like that. I feel like, but um, yeah, I, I don't really have much to say about that. I think it's just something that they're realizing that Oakland might not be the the right place for some of these teams to, you know, to grow. No, totally. Yeah. That that makes a lot yeah. of sense. Yeah. Uh. Uh. The. The last kind of fun question I had for you, and yeah. I, I don't know if anybody has actually asked you this, yeah. at least in the time that I've been covering you, but uh, you have the same name as a very famous actor. Yeah. Um, I, I'm sure you're aware of that. Have you ever, yeah. I mean, are you a fan of him? Are you a fan of like Star Wars, Cassidy? I am. Or? No, I'm a fan of, of the character. I'm not really that much into Star Wars, but there's a movie, uh, Rudo y Cursi, okay. that, uh, that he's in, and it's awesome. And I think... I think I, uh, I think our agents got together once, and I think I he has a jersey of mine. No way. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I, I remember this happening maybe around six months ago. That's crazy. Um, yeah, I think he he has a jersey of mine, and I think um, yeah. So I think that's pretty cool, and I think he he does know who I am. So that's you know even more cool, right? Like he's he's super huge, you know. Yeah, and. No, to know, have him know who I am and have my jersey and have some sort of contact with him was was pretty cool, especially him being such a such a big actor and having a lot of big roles in movies and especially in a movie that I thought was super funny. Uh, uh, and he's in the Book of Life. Yes. Where uh, you know, of course, my son's name came from that movie. That's kind of where oh, where yeah. we where we got Manolo from. So um, it's it's pretty cool, right? The Book of Life. Diego Luna's on the cover. My son's name is the main character. It, it's it's all you know connected, and I think that was pretty cool. That's such an underrated movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because like agree. it it kind of came out like around or around the same time as Coco, and like it's kind of similar to Coco. Exactly. Yep. But it's they're like too- I I think it's I mean they're both good. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but like I really like Book of Life, so I'm glad I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, speaking of of. Uh, movies and tv and stuff are, are you into movies and tv are you are you binging anything right now what do you what do you do in your spare time you watch so many tv shows uh not really i think um yeah i don't know i think the, right now it's a lot of uh elmo and educational <laughs> videos going on in this i love it yeah, not gonna lie a little tired of all the, the little kid songs and music but uh yeah no it, it's it's a lot of that um my girlfriend started watching the, the it's a new TV show the, the, the Mormon Housewives. Oh, of course, yeah. I mean, yeah, you got that, you, uh, you got to watch that if you live in Utah, right? Exactly, and it came into town, and she's she's been getting into it, and it's funny, and he puts it on. So sometimes, you know, I have it playing on in the background while they're watching it, and yeah. That's awesome. Well, yeah. uh, maybe just uh, uh, just to kind of finish up, I'm curious just in general, like what your experience has been like here in Utah as you've gotten to know like the fan base and the community and stuff. How how do you feel like you've kind of been able to become a part of it? Yeah, uh, I think that's probably one of the biggest things here in Utah that I've enjoyed that that everybody. Everybody that's been in Utah has, you know, supported me on and off the field. Everyone that I've ran into that I've met has been you know, genuine, polite, respectful. And I think that's the coolest thing that I've got to to notice here about the fans and even about just people in general that that might not know about soccer or anything, that they've always been supportive, whether they're into it or not, they they understand. And, you know, there's never been any, like, fights or confrontations where has have made things uncomfortable. And I think that's, you know, it's underrated. I feel like that people, it gives a lot of peace of mind to the players and, and to you know us and our families and 
coming from new places and coming to an area where we don't know and having the community welcome us really well, I think is is something that's very underrated and helps the player strictly just focus on soccer rather than, you know, being uncomfortable in the area they're, they're in and, and stuff like that, you know? That's really good to hear, man. Yeah. Uh, so you all, uh, you guys gonna sh- gonna show up in, in 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 the same NASCAR jacket that that Pablo was wearing on Wednesday? You all, you all gonna have your own? <laughs> I think uh, that was pretty sick. I'm not gonna lie. I I saw that today at the at the team store, and it was pretty cool. Um, but we'll see what what everybody pulls out with. That yeah, would be pretty cool if we organized a little <laughs> everybody matching fits and stuff. <laughs> That'd be sick. It, I guess yeah. it's not it's it's it, it's not quite cold enough for like a big jacket yeah. like that. But but maybe maybe in give a month it, or so. Give it a month. Yeah yeah. yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming on, man. Good luck tomorrow against Portland, and uh, we'll we'll see you soon. Of course. Thank you very much for having me, and yeah, I'll see you guys soon.